Hi everybody, I'm Tanya Marie Dubé and welcome to another episode of The Empowered Woman. I'm so happy you're here with me. Today's guest is the fabulous Kennelly Scalcoyanis, who is a success coach who assists business owners to expand and live a luscious life. Having spent over 15 years creating multi-million dollar revenues for brands such as Nickelodeon, Disney, Warner Brothers, and various fashion industry brands across various territories and a and a wide sector of consumer products, she loves envisioning and birthing projects just as much as she loves singing jazz and inspiring entrepreneurs to fulfill their dreams. Kennelly studied with some of the world's leaders in women's empowerment. She is passionate about helping multi-passionate, driven women like me <laughs> vision, birth, and launch projects while honoring their wellness and femininity. Welcome. How are you, Kennelly? Yeah, I'm so good. I'm so, so happy good. So you. good to yes, be yes. here with you. I love that red background behind you. I know we, we had to put a splash of paint when we came into this apartment it many looks, years ago, eight years ago. I love it. It's powerful. I love red. Red lipstick today. Same with you. Ah, yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Mine's actually um, a, a crimson. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, it looks red. And you know, it's helping. The background behind you is making your lipstick look more red. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> um, as usual, I want to remind everybody that kennelly has got a free gift for you today just for showing up. So please stick around to the end because she's going to show you how to use it. So, welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. Should we just jump right in? Yes, let's do that. Okay, let's cool. That. So, tell us, who do you serve? So, I serve the women that normally come and work with me. They come because they want to either start a new business or they're exhausted in the existing business model. And they want to start leveraging or they want to start expanding so that they're not so exhausted and as we start working together normally what happens is women have um, gynecological issues so their bodies have been telling them for a while now that something needs to change or that they're too much in masculine mode they're like too much in the go 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 and they're needing to learn how to manifest things easier and they're tired of this like and they've normally somewhere self-abandoned they've forgotten about aspects of themselves um, like the fitness lady inside or like, so they've kind of abandoned certain parts in order to meet this, their exterior masculine, to meet the patriarchy, get the business done. And now they like life is actually saying, I can't carry on this way anymore. Um, I've got to either change my business model or I've got to do things in a different way because I want to create more time to be healthy to have more time with my kids, to eat properly again, to remember who I am, to start having a sex life again, a sex drive again. Like, I want to be sexy again. I want to remember my hip check. Where did she go? And so these women have like lost themselves inside of being a bit of a man in a man's world, you know, uh, and losing that, that, that feminine aspect of themselves. Um, and, and now like life is demanding and saying, hang on. Do you still want to carry on this way? Is oh, this, I love that. So you're yeah. helping bring a good balance of masculine and feminine energy. Yes, yes. That's they don't true. know that necessarily when they come to me, but that's ultimately what's happening. Um, wow, I background. love it. Okay, that's awesome. So how did you find out that this was the path for you? Oh, I had to go down my own road. I had to go down my own road. So, I mean, uh, after I had my kids, I had a hormonal disorder. He said to me, you cannot carry on doing the way out. you did things before. You cut kids. out for one, you cut out really quickly. And I know you said that you had a hormonal disorder, but then it cut out. So I wanted yes. to make sure you knew what we're talking about. Okay. Yeah. So after my kids, my body was the first, and normally your, our bodies are the first ones to tell us things, but we don't know what it is. We don't know what it means. Like we're either going to start suffering from something. It's going to be fibroids. It's going to be major PMS. Um, and the, the body's going to start telling you, Hey, hello, um, listen to me. Um, so for me, it was after I gave birth to my girls, I, I got a hormonal kind of disorder. It was saying you, you cannot be doing high cortisol things anymore. You cannot be doing you cannot be stretching yourself so thin. You cannot be doing deadlines that are going to stress out your 
your system. You have to learn to work a different way. You cannot be serving um, masculine authority in the same way. So, um, because I used to work with a lot of um, a lot of men in manufacturing, and you know, I used to like travel. So I used to work four time zones, and it was saying, "Now, hang on, we have to, you know, we have to work in a different way now." Yes. Wow. That's interesting. So how long ago were you diagnosed with the hormonal disorder? Oh, everybody just hold on. Just frozen for a second. Hi, okay, you're back. <laughs> It just froze I'm for back. a second. Yay. Yeah, you're back, you're back, you're back. I was telling everybody, just wait. She's coming right back. <laughs> As everybody you're watching, we're having a little bit of a shaky connection. So if that happens and it freezes, just hang tight. We're going to come right back. Yeah. So I was it's saying trans to you, Transatlantic. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. We're going over an ocean right now. Yeah. Um, how, long, how long ago were you diagnosed with the hormonal disorder? So this was... Um, probably about a year after my girls were born. Um, I just, okay. uh, it was about maybe seven years ago. Okay. Uh, but until, you know, you, you, you don't actually, you can't get a diagnosis because what happens is, is you go to normally male gynecologists and they just say, well, take a pill or have a hysterectomy oh, wow. or, um, or go on antidepressants. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. Or go on antidepressants. And it's like, no, surely there has to be a better way and there's a better way to do things. So then I started, you know, expansive research and studying with some of the world's greatest in functional medicine. In, and I really got to understand that there's all the lifestyle components that we need to, um, to start changing. But what I've also seen with the women that come to me, which is fascinating how it works this way, is they... They're coming to me ultimately because they want to shift their businesses. But really what's happening in the background is all these other things. And somewhere along the line, um, just like I had, you know, always looked at um, kind of honoring the outside or honoring the achievement first. So versus remaining in my body and looking after first myself. And, and this is, I'll give you some examples of how women, we are so amazing how we do this. You could be sitting at work and you're thirsty or you need the toilet and you don't actually get up and go and wee when your body first says, I need, I need the loo because you're like, you're busy, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'll speak to women and I'll, they'll say to me, I've got a, a headache and I go, but are you well hydrated? Have you drunk enough water? I'm really busy. I don't have time to drink water. I mean, <laughs> water. water keeps us alive, you know? Um, we can do without food, but you can't, but it's, Somewhere we have become confused because we are plugged into a very patriarchal, fast-paced system, and the system then takes us. And because we are very responsible by nature, and we polymorphic by nature, and we can answer emails, and we can, you know, we can do all these things. But what we intrinsically are forgetting is ourselves. You yeah, know, we're, getting, we're getting, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, like, that's the first. The first part is like going back and listening, learning to listen to the body and listening to self. I have a trick that I tell all of my clients about water. The water thing is seems to be a universal problem with really ambitious women. We forget to drink water. So this is my trick. Anytime you pass by a sink, stop and have a glass of water. Just do it. No matter how busy you are, anytime yeah. you pass by a sink, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, it's amazing once you become in tune, um, I mean, I'm on about three liters of water a day and my body now has come to tell me it needs, and it needs more water. And it's, if I go training and swimming, then I've got to up that to maybe four liters, you know, oh, yeah. I, I can't get away with it. Now, even before bed and my body still needs more water. And you just realize how shut down I used to be, um, when I was in, um, you know, just consulting and, and, and running around for big corporations. Um, wow, isn't that something? 
Yeah, I've gotten to drink a lot of water too. And I remember I used to hate it. I used to hate it for anybody who's watching this who just does not like water. Just put lemon juice in it. Do anything you can yeah. to make it healthy. And sweet. <laughs> this is what I drink. I drink, try to drink one and a half of these every day. Ah, uh, that's yeah. great. And my girls watch me plug down this thing and they go, she's drinking it all. Look, she's drinking it all. <laughs> How much fun to have twin girls. <laughs> Oh, let me tell you, it's, uh, oh, you know, they are, I was watching them the other day doing these, like, they'll go through these moments of absolute, they're dancing, they're doing choreographed stuff together, and then the next minute they're going to kill each other. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's all of that. It's all of that. That's so cute. Yeah. Now, yeah. I noticed um, I, when I was looking at your website, you have a background in advertising and branding. So do you want to let yes. us know how you use that in your business? Yes. Well, I often do um, with a lot of my ladies um, that come to me there. So I'm not kind of like my, my coaching is not standard coaching because what I often do is I partner with my clients. So these are women that are needing a business partner. They're needing somebody to take the project to the next level. So if somebody comes to me and they say, I mean, I've got a client at the moment that's putting up a retreat resort. She's been in the hospitality industry, but the same thing. She was in, a, in the restaurant hospitality, very big, huge um, capacity of three to 5,000 people. And now she was looking at, a, an, at another way that was also going to serve her and what the world needs. And so she's, uh, we've designed an eco-resort. And so what we'll do together is we'll vision out the whole thing and We'll, I'll put that together in, in a big PDF, like a proper vision board PDF of what this project is. How many spots? What does it look like? What is the architecture? What's the look and feel? Like we really get it crystal, crystal. And then the project starts to move forward. Then you do the costings. Then you find your architects. Then you find the piece of land. Then you get your investors. And so it's, you know, um, but what happens is, is it, so women are looking for that because if you just sit, to, if you sit alone with your dream, you are not going to move it forward, you know? And, yeah. and once you partner, you know, once you partner up with somebody, it's just easier because then you get the work done. So I have, you know, I have, yeah. Yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. I mean, in collaboration and we as women are designed for collaboration. We're not designed to do things in isolation. We're just not. So this is another one of the feminine principles that we work with is that we do things in collaboration. Um, and so I have like, I have a bag manufacturer um, and she's designing a beautiful, um, it's not eco, but it's, um, you know, she does upcycled uh, PVC. She uses PVC that ordinarily, these are women that have got conscious based uh, businesses. Um, and so, um, you know, they're, they're, they're using plastic that would have ordinarily been thrown away and they're making beautiful handbags out of them. I mean, I, I love the projects that have, have come and so they um that's so fascinating they light, they light me up and so with her i have a team of designers we design the whole collection we look at combining art with it and then I, so it's kind of like a combination of consulting and, and um coaching okay you cut out just for a second you said it's a combination of like, it's combining art with what it's, it's a combination of coaching and consulting because where I came to after experiencing and spending thousands of dollars for just coaching is that you can get coached by a coach, but at the end of the day, you still have to do the work. And there was a lot of uh, procrastination involved. And I, I realized, hang on, there's a gap here. I need to go back to everything that I was doing before and help these women actually move their projects forward. Um, and, you know, and help them do it in, in the most healthy, healthy way. Oh my gosh. I love that you found your niche like that. That's perfect. I love that. You're the girl in between. The I girl in between. It. Yes. <laughs> you make things happen. That's awesome. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Now I want to say you're a very positive and smiling and happy person. What's your secret to that? How do you, how do you do that? Listen, let me not fool you. I also have my Mediterranean temperament. I can throw a pot plant off the balcony, no problem. I, let's, let's not, you know. But I love, I love, I'm, I am passionate about life and about 
the good things in life. Um, yeah. And and I also had to I had to learn about that. I mean, you know, through going through suddenly I had babies and then this hormonal disorder hit me yeah. and what I would go through premenstrually was like suddenly I was in this depression of this dark hole of it's a disorder called PMDD and I thought what the hell what's going on with me and, and where where did I go and as I started researching I realized all the women with this condition have this um they don't have enough the, the hormonal what's happening in the in the hypothalamus is not converting the serotonin and so there's a there's an issue then to how can and that's why doctors say well take an antidepressant but actually you're just throwing spaghetti at a wall that doesn't stick you know oh, um, wow. yeah, yeah. and so I had to learn how to then design my whole life around producing and retaining serotonin so I exercise every day or I try to. I do cold water swimming in the in the in the winter time. Um, so jumping into the ocean. So anything to maximize energy. Um, uh, I can't say I'd, I still maintain that cool around my kids. I can lose it in a second and become crazy lady. Yeah, yes. but so can we all, right? With children, yeah. honestly. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I am alive. That's one thing I can say to you is I'm fully alive. I have all the spectrum. And this is another thing that I bring into my coaching with my woman is that we as women must play all the 88 keys of the piano. We can have rage, we can have and and for permitted to be and we have to be nice. You can Sorry, you you're cutting out again. Obviously, you know, and I teach tools of uh, you said, okay, so I lost you after we have to play the 88 keys of the piano. I love that. So you're talking, speaking into being, ha having our emotions, yeah? Yeah, yeah, all of them. Grief, rage, you know, sadness, heartbreak, joy. Um, we, that's, that's part of being a woman is to, yeah. you know, we can have those Je Jekyll and Hyde moments and they're absolutely um, normal. normal. It's normal. It's normal, yeah. Yes. Especially, and if you're a mother, it's double normal <laughs> that you can go from immense joy and pride to like, you know, rage and I want to break things. So, <laughs> yes, yes, I know that I have a six-year-old boy and a twelve-year-old girl. So because of the big age gap, there's like a five and a half year age gap. It when they're home with me, it runs the. It's crazy. It's crazy the needs of one and then the needs of the other and then and then one's upset and then the other one's really happy. It's just it's fun though. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's important to be real about it. Like um and I know, you know, on social media we're all gonna look whatever a certain way, but actually let's be real about what it takes to build a business. Let's be real about what it takes to be a woman in the world. Let's be real about what it takes to design a life that you're going to be um, fully self-expressed and I'm not yeah. saying design a life to be happy because that would just be naive you know actually we if we are fully um, feeling um, you know uh, souls on this earth we are going to have all of those experiences wow I love that design a life to be fully expressed that's really beautiful yeah, because most of the time we've been shut down, right? And so this is another aspect when we look at the part of the femininity and how somewhere along the line we just kind of stopped connecting into our sensuality. And there's so many great people out there teaching. I've been studying with uh, Regina Thomas Hauer, the woman that wrote the book Pussy, and she's been phenomenal. I mean, she's uh, revolutionary in what she's um, spreading and, and, and helping women with. Wow, that's really cool. I'm going to look that up. Thank you for saying that. Mm. Um, now, I wanted to know, well, I guess it was it because I can't just be because of your, um, your hormonal disorder that you went down the road to women's empowerment. But what does it mean to you to be teaching women empowerment? Mm, what does it mean? I think it's, um, I think for me, it was a combination of things. I think it's because I spent so many years building up big brands for multinational corporations, which are mainly men driven, right? Yeah. Um, I ex experienced, I experienced what a lot of corporate women experience is where we are 
so diligent and were so focused and I would build turnovers and turnovers. And then you don't necessarily get acknowledged um, in their form of leadership. I used to see whole teams getting destroyed, people getting fired. And it was like, are you kidding me? Like you, you nurture and you build teams and you, um, and this is, and when you're nurturing people and you're growing people in businesses, they start producing amazing results. And then to have like mm. people getting fired and, and people not being honored in, in, because we have to honor profit or because we have to honor something else first. Um, and it's, you know, could be as much as spending big amounts of money to buy yachts and, and, and properties. You know, I used to see so much like inauthentic, Mm -hmm. behavior and it just devastated me and then I thought hang on I've I want to I want to look at why is this happening and I think Cheryl Sandsburg has said and and will continue to say that if women are not stepping up and standing their ground in these corporations then what's gonna fill the gap is the shit <laughs> quite yeah. honestly you know yeah. and so um Hmm. Yeah, it just became important. I think from that experience, I had to start reclaiming my own parts that, that needed to, to look at, well, how can I not be giving away my power? How can I be more effective? Or how can I not give up um, because um, masculine authority has said X, Y, Z, you know? Wow, good for you. I love that. I don't have an extensive corporate background like that. I did work in business, but I wasn't an executive. So I didn't have to, I mean, I've never, I've never had, but I've watched, I've watched women mm -hmm. in executive positions um, take a back seat to promotions that they should have received. I mean, I, I came up in the world sort of, you know, mm -hmm. witnessing this. And I always thought the whole corporate thing was just not for me anyway, for many reasons, mm -hmm. but that was one of them. Right? I mean, look, I, I, I say corporate, but effectively I was always working with smaller um, companies and with a entrepreneur. So I was always building that business, but of course we were representing brands that were multinationals and it was just, wow. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. The amount of red tape and, um, mm. I kind of think it's sometimes it's a block to creativity, you know, yes. that's yeah. exactly how it feels. Yeah. That's and, exactly and also just watching, watching women also. And I mean, I fell into that trap. It's like you start dressing, down and you start hiding parts of who you are and of course you, you need to go through the normal loop of life to realize hang on I don't need to dress a certain way to suit the job or I don't need you know I can just be my I can be myself because I have a genius and I mean I r recognize my genius only maybe after my 30s that actually hang on a second here you know most people are not doing business in the way that I'm doing business and so um but, but do you think everybody is because you don't think, you know, you don't know to identify what your own gifts are. And I often say to, to women is like, you have gifts that you don't realize are just yours and you are so unique um, because the creator would not have made you any less than. And then, and then you see us as women that we don't honor our own genius um, because, and isn't that an insult to our grand creator? Yes. You know. It actually is. I presented my daughter. Did you see that face? There's like a Facebook or, tw or Instagram post. And it said something like, like it had a crazy number, like one, 100 billion and blah, blah, blah. Uh, the odds of you existing. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah. It was like yeah. so crazy. And when you think about that, all the things that are against you, even having come into life. I mean, it's just bizarre to me, you know, and I, you're, I think you're going to appreciate this. I always tell my daughter, you know, I want her to be an entrepreneur by the time she's 18 so that she can choose her university all over the world. And we're in these conversations now to start to think about, you know, what does she want to do? But, um, but I'll tell That's you. So good. I, you're doing such a great job for her. Oh, oh my gosh. Thank you. I hope so. One of the things we talk about is regardless of how um, successful she is as an entrepreneur before she's finished high school, um, I really do think she should still go to university. And one of the reasons for that is because I don't know. I mean, how lucky are we that we were born in a part of the world where we have all of these choices and there's so many women 
and girls all over the world that will never get the opportunity to have an education like we do simply because they have a vagina. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we talk about this all the time. Oh my goodness. I wanted to go and see the world. Yeah. Make a difference. Right. That's huge yeah. for me. Yeah. And, and this is the thing is like, um, one of my um, singing teachers once said, um, we were busy improvising and she said, take your space. And it made such an impact on me. It's like, because if you don't take, if you don't claim your space, if you don't claim your space, something else will. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and it's just, and, and I think, um, was it Meg Ryan was being interviewed and they asked her something about all the tabloids and, and, um, and she said she chose not to kind of respond after a while because she realized um, if you keep responding to the tabloids that are just not correct, um, and it's the same thing, she says, when, you know, when they carry on and you're trying to fight them, then they just, the same thing is like they, they're going to, you know, shit will always take your place, you know, when, when you go, you know. And so I just... I think it is, it's time. It really is. It's such a powerful time now for women to be stepping up. And, um, oh my goodness. Yeah. And, and I've seen it in my own journey and, and it's detrimental. I mean, I've, I've left two big kind of jobs and after I, I retracted my energy because I thought, you know, it wasn't going in the, in the same value system that I had. Um, after a couple of years, they went into liquidation. Wow. And this is, and I've spoken to other, I've spoken to, and the thing is, is that it took me a long time to realize that it's my, it's, it's my energy and what I bring to a job. I create things to make them alive and happen. Yeah. And as women, we take it for granted. Yeah, it's true. We, you know, we completely undervalue that. That's worth millions. We make shit happen. It's worth millions. And then we go and underquote ourselves and underprice ourselves and all of that stuff. Yeah, I know. And it's not right. I love that. And I feel like you're also speaking into your intuition. You know, you're saying pay attention to that intuition. Yeah. Well, that is our, and that, that when I say we only realize what my genius was after my 30s, mm. that was my genius. Because, I mean, I never knew how to do any of the things that I, was doing that I was just going with intuition and I would land up in meetings and know that people were bullshitting. I could just sense it. And I was like, you know, what are you talking about? You know, you know, prominent people that are like, but they're just lying through their teeth. And it's like, you know, and so, and we, and we, we are genius at this. So we just, we have such great intuition in the action. If we just keep taking the actions, the next step reveals itself. So, you know, the one thing about, is yeah. if you're not taking the action, you're not going to have this beautiful gift. And this is divinely, it's given. It's not, it's not of me. It just comes. It comes because I took the step, you know. Wow. I'm making a note of that. I absolutely love that you just said that. It's so true. If you take the steps, even as scary as they might be, if you know in your heart that it's the right thing to do and you start taking those steps, everything happens. Everything yeah. starts to move. And sometimes yeah. it can move pretty quickly. <laughs> It, and it moves even faster when you're taking the step with somebody because yeah. you know, I had to question the fact is like when I got to then become just a solo um, entrepreneur and set up a, a, a more kind of, um, I would say spirited uh, business, I started to actually own the fact that I used to work in a more um, spirited, soulful way. Um, mm -hmm. And, and, and notice when I was walking the path on my own and I would slip into self-doubt and doubt and, oh, what should I do? Confusion. Which, this is all just a form of resistance, you know. But when you just take the action as if you know what you're going to do, then the next step reveals itself. And, and, and I never had that setting up any other business that I had set up. I mean, I set up a business at the age of 21 and I set up another one, you know. And so... I never had those like, oh, um, maybe I'm doing something. No, it's like, well, suck a number out of your thumb and then you can self-correct as you go along, you know, but as long as you're taking the steps, you know. Yes, yes. Well, you know what? And I find some of the best lessons that we learn in business happen because we make the mistakes. Like you got to make the mistakes. You have to. <laughs> yeah. And it, it might not even be, I mean, I, I never used to look at it as a mistake, um, 
I never used to look at it as I used to look at it as I'm gathering, I'm finding out information. Like you'll go there and somebody will say, no, 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 the store's not here. You've got to turn left and right. And then off you go and you turn left and right. But you don't turn and say to yourself, oh, that was a mistake that I went there. No, it was just that, <laughs> you know, it's like we, then we, we, should, we become yeah. all critical to ourselves and, you know. Yeah, 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 that's true. You know what? I'm noticing that too. I'm learning. Yes, I'm, I'm usually always very succinct in the language that I'm using. I pay very, very, very close attention to that. Mm. But I also do have this thing about myself, and maybe there's other people watching who can identify with this, where mm. I need to be a little harder on myself in some spaces, in some areas mm. of what I do, because that's mm. how I self-correct, right? That's how yes. I, but yeah, you're right. They're not always mistakes, no. Oh yeah, yeah, and also, I mean, there are times when we are, um, as, oh, what is that picture of like, when you're on the bathroom floor and you're going, okay, something has to change now, you know? And yeah. until you get to that place of like going, hang on, this doesn't work. Um, now I need, you oh know, but yeah. yeah. So there's, there's that as well. But you know, the other thing is, is like looking at how can you be using divine guidance? So like we're not designed as women to do things on our own because we're not secular in the way that we've been built up. We're, you know, we can do, we are multiple, you know, we multitask naturally. Um, and in every woman, there's another 10 women. I think I like that analogy. In fact, Anthony Robbins says Again, that. Every Anthony, woman. In, in every woman, there's 10 women. But in Anthony, you know, Anthony Robbins says, in fact, with women, there's about 20 of you in there, you know. Wow. Um, you just gave me goosebumps. I love that. And every woman, there's about 10 women. Is that what you said? They are. And you know, you know, when I heard that for the first time, I loved that. I, I loved the fact that finally somebody is giving me permission to be ev all of me. All, <laughs> all, all of facets of who you are. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I've got this business side. I've got my jazz singing side with the musos. I've got my hippie side. I've got my mountain climbing side, sporty side. I've got the... I've got the me that comes together with people and we, we converse and, and, we be, and then there's the me that's alone. Yeah. It's very different to who I was when I was sitting on my own reading my book. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Wow, so let me ask you this. What are your goals for your future? My goals, well, um, I have a big one, but I'm not going to say it out loud yet. <laughs> okay. Um, so in the immediate future or like? Well, I mean, I see you as a visionary. I see you as yeah. a leader and yeah. I see, you know, you're the woman that makes things happen. So I'm thinking, you know, I want to know what, what's, what's in the future for you. So, I mean, this is why I built Luscious Life because I really love that word. It um, encompasses deliciousness. Yes. It encompasses sensuality, which is really getting connected to your senses. Yeah. And so... We haven't said your website yet. So lusciouslifecoaching.com. Yes, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And, and so for my future, I mean, I'm kind of like in that where I'm piecing it together. So the one, the one thing that I haven't yet done is... Um, I've, I've done things where I take my clients, I partner with them, I um, take them onto like one day full immersion retreats where we, we are, these are decadent, these are like life changing experiences. We really have a chance to, to do all of that. So we go into the senses. So before somebody's going to start visioning, you can't, you can't take them where they are at in their old life and how they are living to design the new life. And so I normally talk about the first step of procedure, which is like detoxing. And it's not just about detoxing food, but it's detoxing behaviors and, and, and the way that you're currently um, living. So like emptying out, you know, yeah. and I have like a, a really busy professional now that's come to me. She wants to change her business model. She's got 15,000 patients, but she wants to start serving more people and she needs to be serving more people because people need her help. Um, but she can't, she has to start emptying out. So there's got to be, as women, we, we, we have womb space. If our womb is already full, 
you know, we need to actually start emptying out so that we can create something new. And that's where most women want to carry on doing more and more and more, but actually you've got to start emptying out so that you can take out the busyness, take out the, um, the toxicity. And this mm -hmm. could be in any form. We've all had clients that are not aligned for us, that we overwork for. We've all had, um, uh, working in a way that doesn't serve us, skipping meals. So we've got to take out so that we can align. Um, and so my, so what my future looks like is uh, to continue to expand this idea of people living in a more luscious way uh, because they'll get more, they'll get more prosperity. And it's not just in money, uh, monetary uh, terms, it's in terms of time, um, having time to exercise every day, having time to eat their three beautiful meals every day, not fast and on the go. Um, yeah. you know, stepping into a more abundance and more, a more full, a more, just a more, a more luscious. Um, <laughs> so, so what I'm stepping into now is I'm, I've designed two retreats for this year in, in a beautiful, beautiful location where they also do, um, more conscious eating and smoothies and this sort of uh, thing, which is in alignment. It's all hormonally. It supports women's hormones. It supports right. women to be. To be so I, was gonna, I was just going to say for anybody who wants to know more about your retreats, they can find it on your website because that's where I found it. Yes. 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 Wow, that's, that's fantastic. I love your answers to all of these questions. I'm going to now ask you, I have eight questions that I ask every expert okay. who's been on the series. Okay. And I want to know, and you don't know what they are. You didn't ask me for them. So we're going to surprise you. So the first one is, what inspires you? Everything around pussy. Everything around women. It does. I think women I are beautiful and genius and amazing. And when we... When we stop being so tired, we are just, you know, we light up the world. You know, you light up one woman and she's going to change the village, you know. Yeah. Um, that, that's why I believe in women. Like if you get her relaxed and juiced up and connected with friends and other women, she's going to, she's going to, she's going to do great things. Mm. Because we're givers. The world. We're givers yeah. and we're nurturers and we're teachers naturally. Yeah. Oh, yes. 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 I love that. Um, in your opinion, how can we live an awakened life? I think we have to take time to realize, I mean, I do this morning and evening is when I just connect to this higher source and mm. I allow that energy to fill me up, I get so emotional and I realize I'm a miracle. I'm a miracle that I'm even here, that I'm yeah. even breathing, that I'm even, you know, and I did a little video today on my Facebook page about this this love that you have to f allow to fill you up you know and then you can give it i love mm. that love and gratitude yeah yeah wow. but just this awareness to connect in you know to connect in it's yeah. it's quite profound um now i want to know your thoughts about falling down what can we learn when we fall down oh you know falling down <laughs> And it hasn't been my most graceful. I have um, had to learn to become more uh, resilient. Okay. Uh, state like I have to now do some of the um, the um, the Campbell the journey. You know, I have to go and do some of that inner work, um, and I have to come back to self. So. That's what I realized with falling down is that I've got to come back to self. That somewhere I was either trying to run too fast, I was running outside of myself, I was not connected to source. And in the falling down, I have to now come back to self, go and do more of the inner work and then get oh. up. You know. Would you say that that's how we find the spirit then to get back up? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's or, right. it's, or it's almost like an, a, an, another alignment. It's kind of saying, okay, great. But now you're going to be heading in this direction, you know, because I don't think, I, I think when we just, everything's summer, I think in the summer of life, in the summers of life, we just, we just in the joy. So we, 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 we need a winter. We need to fall down. We need the winter to grow. We need to learn. We need to do more of the, 
the root work, you know. So, I yeah. mean, there's a beautiful there's a beautiful song that that I used to enjoy singing. Um, you must believe in spring. It's a jazz standard. You're gonna need to send me some of your jazz songs. Uh, I've got some YouTube stuff, and it says, "Just as a tree, as a tree, is that it? Uh, just as a tree is sure its leaves will reappear, it knows its emptiness is just a time of year." And so, like when we fall down, we've got to know it's just going to be a time of year. It's just for the bit of the winter because we're getting, we're preparing for, for the next spring, for recreating ourselves, for the recreation, you know? Wow. I love that. That's very poetic. That's very beautiful. Yes. <laughs> now let me ask you this. What was the most difficult decision you have had to make in pursuing your destiny? What was the most difficult decision? I think um, I think for me it was terrifying to go solo, to walk, um, to walk solo. I was always used to working in teams. Um, mm. I think that was really hard. I think that, and and also because the resistance comes up so frequently, you know, and so the the further layering of self discovery i think that was um that was hard and also not being able to connect into some kind of network you know um oh. like when you get up and you go to your job there's something sexy about that you can get up in the morning and um put your clothes on and be part of the world and so then that other persona is birthed right that other part of ourselves but to when you when you're a solopreneur and you're working from home and i mean sometimes i go off to this co-working space um there there it's 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 lonely so that that was a difficult part for me as a social yeah i was just talking about that the other day even though a work space environment like a traditional office environment is not for me Mm, at mm, all mm. <laughs> i do miss that i do miss the getting up and the getting ready so i still do that every day but mm. i miss the interactions with the regular people that you see all the time right mm, mm, mm. Yeah, that's interesting. yeah i mean there's some great sexy funky co-working spaces that i've seen in new york that are amazing like they've got is, it is that what you're talking about we work I think, yes, it's WeWork. And there's another one, which is, I can't remember the name, but it's in Midtown and they've got Ayurvedic food. And so they're oh. kind of, it's a, con it's a conscious working space, which is nice. Um, so I think people have found ways to, um, a, many years ago when I was, I was doing something in Cape Town and, and there was a co-working space there, there was like a production industry and there were copywriters and then there was uh, music managers so that was at least like you can do your work and then you can mingle at the tea and you can still get to creatives that are like they're contemplating an idea and you've got somebody to bounce off, you know? So I think that's um, challenge. Yeah. I mean, the challenge, that was a challenge for me, but I wanted to create something that gave me more freedom to be bringing up my girls and going to fetch them and take them and, and not have to drive, you know, an hour to go in traffic and, yeah. you know, so, yeah, because that's not um, that's not living your best self when you're stuck in traffic and frustrated and always rushing and yeah, yeah. <laughs> now let me ask you, what is, in your opinion, what is the purpose of the human experience? What is the purpose of the human experience? I think the experience itself. Oh, I like that. I think I mean I think we're here to experience. Mm -hmm as much as we can. I mean, you know, maybe I'd like to say more sophisticated, we're here to evolve and get to the next, but you know, we're here and I often say to friends is like, when you are 80 and you look back at yourself younger and you think, I had legs, why didn't I wear enough short skirts? Or right? why didn't I, I was young then, why didn't I just quit that job and get another one? Why did I stay in it for so long? I was young then. Why was I dating this guy for like five years when I knew he wasn't the one? Why wasn't I just ex moving on to experience more? Why was I staying? Wow. Um, 
you and I are exactly on the same page with that. Everything you just said. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, yes, we're here to, we're here to serve and we're here to connect and we're here to help. And we're here to, I think it's our nature when we are in the love vibration, you know, but to be fully self-expressed. I mean, I think, Wow. I don't think you're we very, came to you're live. A very poetic person. I really love it. Well, I don't think we were here to be shut down. I'm Greek, you know, so I'm, I'm going to sing you a song, cook you a meal, you know, all of that. <laughs> I love it. It's beautiful. You're like giving me goosebumps all the time. I'm loving this conversation. Yay. Um, let me ask you, I've got two more questions for you. So the next one is, what advice would you give to your younger self? Hmm. I think I would say, um, don't give it all away so fast. Like keep something back for you. Uh, I would have said that. Um, I love that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. And what is the purpose of forgiveness to you? I think it's, I did, a, I did a wonderful thing about forgiveness. I think it's really so that we can fill up on more. Because yeah. I think until we've forgiven, it's blocked space. It's like taking up space. We can't create on top of not forgiving. Hmm. Yes, I mean, and you're all about creation. I love that. Yeah, so we have to actually forgive. And forgiveness is for us more than it is for the person or the thing that you're forgiving. It's for us to release it out of our grip. Because as long as, and you see, this is the, when you start to even study some of this work with Leila, people like Leila Martin or Regina, and you realize that in our womb, I mean, if you do things like jade egg practices, and this is ancient, tantric, feminine stuff, we store everything in our wombs. Everything we created or didn't create is stored in our wombs. And I had a profound breakthrough with this forgiveness that I that, that Sorry, you just, cut, you just cut out. You just cut out. You said you had an extraordinary experience with? Uh, with doing a jade egg practice because wow. it, what it does is it awakens the womb and you have to, you know, learn to let some stuff go. And so... Jade egg. Um, what is that called that you're referring to? Someone just mentioned this to me yesterday. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's wonderful. It's a great tool. It's been used with the, in, a, in the ancient China. The, the princesses were using jade eggs for years and years. Um, I was just talking about this yesterday. Isn't that funny? It's profound. And for women, it's huge forgiveness work. It's, it allows actually the womb to clear out of all stuff. And you don't even know you're storing stuff there. So I'll give you a quick example because this ties back into the feminine. So I had uh, an 11 month or, you know, my brother was 11 months older than me. And so he was, he was definitely jealous that this new baby came along, right. And took his light. And so he used to like beat, beat me up, you know, as kids do. And, but what I learned at that very young age was that I have to be a toughie. I have to hold myself quite firmly, you know, and, and, and then I walked around the world like that as a tuppy. And so later on how that looks like is that woman, I couldn't be girly girly. And I didn't have like, you know, somebody to come and whatever, serve me tea or I had to be a tuffy, Right. So, and so you kind of identify more with the masculine part of yourself and um, how that manifests in later on in life is maybe you take on being a little bit more toughy at the gym or you do triathlons or you, you know, you're, you're more of, you know, and then maybe you go into corporate where you're also a bit more of a, you know, like nobody's going to mess you, with you, you know, yeah, yeah, no one's going to mess you. So, but what I realized is that this is stuff I didn't even know was even there from the age of three, you know, and you're storing it somewhere so you're walking around, let's say, you, what, what happens with the jade egg is you start becoming conscious that you're walking around with, um, you know, the, what do they call this when you're doing Kegels, the, the oh, muscles. Okay. So the muscles around and you're doing, you're doing your Kegels. You don't, so you, you, you start to notice that all of our consciousness as women, 
we can start to have a consciousness around what's happening around our vaginal canal, around our womb area. And most of us, if we walk around men that are going to go, mm, hey, honey, you know, like they're going to start, you know, yeah. and you'll tighten up. You'll actually go into a state of protection. You'll tighten up. Wow. But most women will walk around their whole lives like this. So if they were beaten up by little brothers or um, if you didn't feel that you could just be a fully relaxed receiving okay. woman, because yeah. women are all about receiving. So you have to be completely relaxed in that whole area to receive, to manifest, to create, to do all these things. Wow. And so, yeah, these, these practices are, are quite phenomenal. I can't believe you just mentioned that to me. I think this is now my sign that I've got to look into this for myself. <laughs> well, look, you know, have a look at, you know, the likes of there's fantastic teachers out there teaching jade egg practices. Really okay. phenomenal. I will. Now, I wanted to quickly get to your free gift. Let's tell everybody what your free gift is today and how they can use it. So I've got a, a Zoom link that we're going to put down below or, and I'm going to have Everybody that wants to jump onto a Zoom, they're going to come on a Zoom. We're going to talk about anything that they want to talk about in their business, around their femininity, and it's going to be an hour-long session. And so we're all going to come on, and they're going to have free, free range to ask me any question. We're going to dive into anything that they want around what they're creating for their lives. Maybe they're not creating a business. Maybe they want to create like their trip around the world. Maybe they want to create a book or or a song, or whatever wow, it is. Wow, how much fun. This will be a group yeah. of all of us women talking. Exactly, exactly. Oh, I exactly. love that. Okay, and wonderful. women love to create in community. It is profoundly easier than creating um, on your own. That's a fantastic gift. I love it. It's very generous. It's very feminine and open. It's beautiful. I love it. I'm not surprised that's your gift. <laughs> You're, you, you, you're a genius at this. You should be a professional interviewer. I can see your your future is is an interviewer of note. TV. That's very sweet. Yeah. I would love Beautiful. to. That's you're exactly. A what I, oh. You're a natural. You're a natural. A natural. Thank you so much. That's very sweet of you to say. I love that. Thank you so much for being here today, Canelli. I think you're wonderful. You've got so much wonderful energy about you. I think you've just inspired everybody who's watching to do something <laughs> for sure. And I'm oh, going to get yeah. on that Zoom call. I think that's such a fantastic gift. I'm going to be there for sure. Perfect. And uh, again, thank you so much for coming thank today. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Okay. Bye thank bye. you, everybody. As always, we would love, Kennelly and I would love, love, <coughs> love your thoughts about today. Um, all the lessons and the things that you've learned, the strategies, ideas, and how you can implement that into your life. So once again, thank you everybody for watching The Empowered Woman. This is the place to come to learn how to challenge your fears, powerfully live the life that you want, and step into that influential woman that we all know you are. Thank you everybody again. Thanks, Kennelly. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.